Lord. Let's give the glory and honor to God. Jesus, we love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Bless us, God, today. Thank you, Lord, for your power, God. Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. It's good to be here. Great to feel the presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. I'm, I was very thankful to see all the prayers happening before service. Amen. It's, it makes a difference when you invite God to your services. It does. And, and we, don't, we don't have a lot of time to waste. I believe the Lord's coming back soon. Amen. And so when we have service, we need to be effective. Amen. When we gather together to worship, amen, we need God to move. Praise the Lord. So when we get here early and pray, it makes a dynamic impact on our services. And we're, I'm so thankful for that. Amen. I'm so thankful to be here. Thank you, Brother Hanson, for coming. I did get some good drone videos in the, in the front here. And this is a beautiful church building. It really is. Out, out here in the, just in the middle of the forest. And I was looking at the, I look at Google Earth and I'm, and I'm zooming in and I said, that spot right there, I think that's it. And sure enough, it was the church here. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here with the hearts today. Amen. And all the hearts. Amen. <laughs> Brother Terry Hart has come to our church a couple of times to preach and we appreciate him. He reminds me of the pastor where I grew up. And I really thank God for that. And all of our friends, I would miss some people. Amen. But Especially, Brother Hanson, thank you for having me preach. I appreciate that. Let's go to the word of the Lord. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 1. Amen. Do you know this one? <laughs> Amen. It says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Amen. Very familiar passage of Scripture. Amen. I've, I've read it at least probably 30 times because every time I restart my yearly Bible reading, I at least get to those Scriptures. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But this is very familiar, and so it should hit home with you today. Amen. I'm going to preach to you for a little while. Formed to be filled. Formed to be filled. Can we go to the Lord? Jesus, I ask you, God, to have your hand upon each and every one of us today, Lord. Jesus, we're here at your call, Lord God. We're here because you, Lord, called us to be here, Lord God. And Lord, we know that you have more to do, God. We know that you want to form us, Lord God. We know that you want to fill us, Lord Jesus. God, would you have your way, Lord Jesus, today and bless us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank you for standing you may be seated. Amen. This scripture, uh, chapter 1, verse 2, it says that the earth was without form and void. Amen. Void means empty or that there was nothing. Amen. God had not yet begun to form and to fashion the earth. Amen. And so it was really just emptiness. It was really just a vast Amen. Emptiness without fashion, no mountains, no seas, nothing really except for a big ball of mud, I guess. Amen. But God never intended the earth to stay that way. Amen. In fact, with God, Jesus said, with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. Nothing is the absence of something. Amen. And so with God, the absence of something is impossible. Amen. So when I go to the Lord in prayer, it's impossible for him to do nothing. Amen. It's impossible for God to just not regard, amen, my prayers. Because with God, something is going to happen. Amen. In fact, in Isaiah 45 and 18, in regards to the earth and the creation, amen, 45, 18, it says, thus say, For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens, God himself that formed the earth and made it, he hath established it. He created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord and there is none else. Amen. He, 
the, the easy read version, amen, says, instead of saying in vain, it says he formed it not void, amen, to, to correspond or correlate with Genesis 1 and 2, amen. Or the, uh, the English Standard Version says he formed it not a waste, amen. He didn't just form the earth to waste it. He didn't just form the earth to throw it away. But he informed it, he formed it, amen, to be inhabited, to be populated, to be filled, amen. He created the heavens, amen, and then he filled them with many galaxies, amen, and many stars. I, I guess it's estimated that there's 14 billion stars in our galaxy, just our galaxy. That's not to count the other ones. Amen. And thousands upon thousands of other galaxies filled with other stars. Amen. Out in the Midwest, and Brother Hansen will know what I'm talking about. But when you look up in the night sky, when there's no moon and no clouds, there is a band of white. Amen. We don't get that up here because there's so many lights and it kind of dims the, the stars. But there's a band of white. It's called the, that's why it's called the Milky Way galaxy. And you look up and you say, oh, that's why it's called the Milky Way galaxy. Because you can't even see past the band. There's so, there's so many stars packed. The heavens are filled, amen, with the stars. Amen. He created the firmament or the atmosphere. And he filled it with flying creatures, amen. Birds and insects and bats, amen. He filled it. He didn't leave it waste or he didn't leave it void, amen. But he filled it with creatures, amen. He created the oceans, of course, and he filled them with fish and swimming creatures, amen, and all kinds of, amen, insects and everything. It's full. Amen. They haven't mapped all the, all the creatures in the oceans. Amen. But he has filled the oceans and filled the seas and filled the rivers. Amen. With fish. Amen. He created the dry land and caused dry land to appear. And of course he filled it with all kinds of creatures. Amen. All kinds of beasts. Amen. The beasts of the field. Amen. And Everything from the, the horse, the giraffe, everything, amen, God put it there because he intended it, amen, the earth to not be a waste, to not be a void, amen, but he formed it to be inhabited. Praise the Lord. He did it all by the, the, his word. He spoke it all into existence, amen, and this gives us a powerful, amen, look at what the Word of God can do, amen, and how powerful it is, amen, that when the Word of God is spoken, amen, that something is going to happen, amen. In fact, Isaiah 55, 11 says, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. Amen. It's impossible for God to speak and nothing to happen. It's impossible for God to speak and there to be a return of void. Amen. So as soon as God said, let there be light, there was light. Amen. The void started to fill. Amen. He spoke everything you see into existence. All of creation, the heavens, the earth, the seas. Amen. Everything that there is. Amen. Because his word, when he spoke it, it was impossible for it to return void unto him. Amen. It wasn't going to be empty. It wasn't going to be a waste. Amen. And I believe today if we can get God speaking to us and we can get the Spirit of God moving, amen, that something is going to happen in your life. Something is going to happen to change your circumstance. Something is going to happen. That void that's in your heart, amen, is going to be filled. Praise the Lord. Amen. Of course, God filled the lungs of Adam. He formed Adam from the, the dust of the ground. Amen. He created all the other things by his word. Amen. But when it came to man, he took time to fashion him. He took time to form him. Genesis 2-7 says, 
And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. Amen. God filled those lungs with air. Amen. And man became a living and a moving and a walking and a talking soul. Amen. Hallelujah. It was a complete miracle that God took the dust, amen, and the mud and the clay and he began to fashion it and form it and it became flesh and sinew and bone and muscle, amen, and blood, amen, as soon as God breathed upon it, amen. That's a complete, awesome, powerful miracle, but it also shows us Amen. That God is concerned with us. He's concerned with mankind. Amen. He took time to fashion and to form. Amen. Adam was made from the dust of the earth. Amen. And the earth belongs to the Lord. The earth belongs to the Lord. Psalm 24 and 1, a psalm of David says, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Amen. But then the psalm here takes a a complete turn. It sounds like he's talking about creation. Sounds like he's talking about God forming and fashioning the earth. Amen. But then the next verse says, Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart, who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. See, we think he's talking about the earth, amen, and fashioning and forming, amen, and how he owns it and how it's all his. Amen. But we've got to remember that man was made from the earth. Amen. And the earth is the Lord's. We were made from clay and the clay is the Lord's. Amen. And so we've got to respond to him. And we might think, how God can you take something that's muddy? How God can you take something that's clay? Amen. And give it life. Amen. But I'm telling you right now that God can fill your life. God can move in your life. God wants to to touch you. God wants to make you a living, moving, breathing, walking, talking miracle for him. Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we want the Lord to have his way with us. Amen. The Lord's, I like to call it the Lord's prayer class in Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. It says, after this manner, therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. We want the Lord to have his way with us. Amen. There's something that's always been missing, amen, without God. There's a, a void that can only be filled by God. There's a, there's a, a kind of a built-in. Remember, Adam was created to have fellowship with God. Adam was created to have love, amen, and show love to God, and God to show love to him. Amen. Adam was created, amen, to, to have that fellowship, amen, and that closeness with God. And so without God, there is a void. There's something missing, amen. There's something that you were created for, amen, that is to give glory and honor and worship to God, amen, that's missing from your life, amen, when you don't have God in your life. Amen. When you don't have the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. But, amen, you, you, each and every one of you were formed. Were formed. You say, well, I wasn't formed by God of the dust of the ground. I wasn't formed out of clay. You know, God made it, maybe took time with Adam, and God maybe, you know, gave Adam all that attention, but he didn't give that kind of attention to me. Amen. But the word of the Lord says in Isaiah 44, 2, thus saith the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb. Amen. Which will help thee. He didn't just form you to not help you. 
Amen. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and thou Jezrun, whom I... I have chosen. Verse 24 of this same chapter says, Thus saith the Lord thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb. I am the Lord that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself. Amen. He formed you. He fashioned you. He took time on you. He knew what he wanted to make you into. Amen. In verse uh, chapter 43, Isaiah 43 and 1 says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by, na by thy name. Thou art mine. Amen. Remember the earth is the Lord's. And when he formed you, when he fashioned you, amen, he had, amen, something in mind for you. Amen. And that was to give him praise, to give him glory, to give him worship. Amen. To give him honor. Can we just love him right now? Hallelujah. If you lift your hands, amen. Oh God, I want you to form me and fashion me, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. I praise you, God. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There was a purpose for which you were formed. Amen. You... I can tell you why you weren't, or, or reasons why you were not formed, amen. You were not formed to be filled with sin. Romans 129, amen, talking about those that go into apostasy and the, say the wicked of, the wicked of the wicked, amen, the most wicked, amen. But look at what it says about those in Romans 129, it says, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affections, implacable, unmerciful. God did not form you. He didn't take time to fashion you for you to be filled with any of these things. This was not the purpose that God created you for. Amen. God didn't create you to be filled, amen, with lies and deceit. Amen. God didn't create you to be filled, amen, with depression and anxiety. God didn't create you to be filled with, with hatred and murder and, amen, and suicidal thoughts and things that he didn't create you, amen, to be an abuser or, or to be abused. He didn't create you, amen, for any of those things. He doesn't want want you to be filled with those things. Amen. But does anybody know what God wants you to be filled with? Does anybody know, amen, how God wants you to be filled with his glory? Amen. How God wants you to be filled with his love? How God wants you to be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. God wants you to be filled today. Praise the Lord. You were formed to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. To be filled with his power. Romans chapter 5 verse 5 says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Amen. This verse right here proves that God loves you. It proves that he cares and loves, amen, with an everlasting love, your life. Hallelujah. Because the Holy Ghost was shed abroad in your heart. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. I'm so thankful that you love me, God. I'm so thankful, Lord Jesus, that you didn't just stop to, amen, forming me, Lord God, to leave a void. But God, that you formed me to be filled with your spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. You were formed to be filled with all the fullness of God. Ephesians 3.19 says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness. Somebody say all the fullness 
of God. Hallelujah. I'm so thankful, amen, that he loves me, amen, and I'm even more thankful that I know he loves me. Amen. It's one thing, amen, if you receive like a one-sided affection or a love, amen, and you don't know about it, amen. But when God gives you that revelation that he loves you, it's like your soul breaks open and your heart cries out, amen, and you're filled with his power and you're filled with his glory and you just want to cry out, oh, God loves me. Oh, he loves me. He loves me. And I know he loves me. Praise the Lord. I know he loves me because he filled me with the Holy Ghost. Amen. A free gift. Amen. That's available for everyone. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, just like our creator, we like to build. Amen. We like to make things. Amen. You guys built this beautiful building. Amen. But you didn't build it just for it to sit empty. You built it, amen, where, so that where two or three are gathered together in his name, that he'd be there in the midst. Amen. You know, houses are built, but they're not a home unless there's things in them, especially those that you love, the people you love. Amen. I, I moved a lot as a young man, and I slept many a nights in an empty room with packed boxes and a sleeping bag. That didn't feel like home to me. Amen. But when the bed got there and you started unpacking the box and filling the room with your toys and your things and all your stuff, amen, and especially, you know, the little brother would share a room with me. It didn't feel like home unless I had to share the room, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. But all of those things, we, we are made in the image of him. Amen. And we like to build things. We like to craft things. We like to create things. Amen. And God's given us that ability to do that. Amen. But he, amen, gives us an example of how things are made to be filled. Amen. He is the great potter. Amen. And we are the clay. Isaiah 64, 8 says, But now, O Lord, thou art our Father. We are the clay, and thou art our potter. And we all are the work of thy hand. Every single one of us, amen, was formed and fashioned. Amen. And every vessel that's formed, every pot that's formed, every, amen, clay vessel that's formed, amen, on the potter's will is intended to be filled with something. Amen. There in the natural, it's intended to be filled with grain or with water or with something. Whatever it is, it's not intended to just be filled, I mean, to be formed and not filled. Amen. Jeremiah 18.1, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, the word of which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. Amen. You imagine this lump of clay sitting there on that potter's wheel. Amen. They have machines now, but they used to actually use their feet with pedals and start turning that. So it was like a whole body experience for that potter. Amen. There's some message in that. God put everything into you. He put everything in making you. Amen. But this clay may have some impurities. Amen. It may have some lumps or it may have something that's hard. And as that, that vessel is beginning to take shape, those impurities end up coming through. Amen. And they might snag the hand of the potter and it will cause a tear, a mar. Amen. And, you know, the potter could say, man, this clay is 
no good. This clay, I'm just going to take this clay and throw it over there into the trash. Amen. But he doesn't. He keeps that clay and he begins to work those impurities out. He begins to work those things, amen, that resist, amen, the shape that he's trying to make it. Amen. And he begins to pull those impurities out and begins to set those things aside. And as he does that, it makes it to where he can begin to form and fashion and draw out the shape that he wants to make. Amen. It's the potter's prerogative, amen, to make the vessel for what he intends it to be used for. And if the vessel's marred, the potter can choose to throw that clay away or he can make it again, make it anew. Amen. And I'm so thankful that when God was working on me, and that when God was forming me, and that when he was fashioning me, he certainly found impurities. He's, was there anyone that didn't have impurities? <laughs> no. But he didn't throw us away. He didn't take us off the wheel. Amen. But he began to make it anew. And the key is that the vessel, when it's marred, it's still in the potter's hand. It was marred in the hand of the potter. And as long as you put yourself into the hands of a living God, He can still work on you. He can still move you. He can still make you. Amen. And God's plans for you, what He intends to make you for, are better than your plans. They're better than the things that you can imagine. They're better than the dreams that you have for yourself. Amen. His ways are far above my ways. His plans are far above my plans. Amen. I, I don't even know what my plans were for myself. Amen. But they weren't this, Pastor. <laughs> they weren't being used of God. They weren't being here. Amen. Amen. But there was something that I realized years ago that if I would just keep putting myself in his hands, keep putting myself on that wheel, keep putting myself and say, God, mold me, make me, fashion me, amen, form me into what you want me to be. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I just got to worship the Lord right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, lift up your hands. Oh, just give God the thanks and the praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God, we give you the glory. We give you the praise, God. Thank you, Jesus. 2 Timothy 2.20 says, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold, and of silver, but also wood and of earth, some and some to honor and some to dishonor. Amen. If a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. Amen. The key here is that you're in the house. Amen. How many knows that the church of the living God is a great house? Amen. Clap your hands unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Make a joyful noise. This is a great house. Amen. The household of faith is a great house. Amen. And it doesn't really matter if you're a, a vessel of dishonor, amen, or a vessel of honor in the beginning. Amen. It matters where you are. Amen. It matters that you made your way to the house of God today. It matters that you make your way to those prayer groups. And it, it matters that you keep connecting, amen, and working and networking, amen, into those things to become part of the house. Amen. And this verse, verse 21, gives us hope. Amen. It gives us hope that if we can, amen, be purified, if we can be sanctified, amen, that we'll be made a vessel of honor. Amen. Hallelujah. For, let me give you a, a couple of examples. A vessel of dishonor. Amen. That was made into a vessel of honor. Amen. It's, 
it found in John chapter 2, verse 6. Amen. But this was the first miracle that Jesus did. Amen. That's recorded here in Scripture. Amen. And you know the story that there was a wedding feast. Amen. And they began to run out of wine. Amen. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, found the servants. Amen. And came and brought the servants to Jesus and said, whatever he tells you to do, do it. And so here's where we pick up verse 6. It says, and there were, there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. Jesus saith unto them, fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear, it, uh, bear unto the governor of the feast. And they bear it. When the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew, the governor of the feast called the bridegroom and saith unto him, Every man at the beginning doth set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Amen. I want you to notice something. Amen. Those water pots, amen, were for purifying, which means that they, purif they were for purifying so that they were unclean. They were filled with dirt from the road. Amen. That's what the, the, the culture of the Jews was at the time, was that travelers would come in and there would be water pots there to wash the dust off their feet. feet. You, you all know this. Amen. But I want you to notice the location that they were. They were there by the door. They were there by the place where the entering in was. I'll tell you where they weren't. They weren't at the dinner table. They weren't at the, the table of the governor. Amen. But I want you to notice something. Amen. The governor didn't know where those pots came from. Amen. So you can be a vessel of dishonor. You can be an unclean vessel. You can be a vessel that's, that's dirty. Amen. But because you follow the command of Jesus, and because you're filled, amen, with the water from the Holy Ghost, amen, God can take you from the, the place where you're on the outside, amen, to the place where you're in and being poured out into the master's cup. Amen. To be drank. Amen. From the governor's, amen, cup. Hallelujah. That's what God can do with a, a vessel of dishonor. Amen. Is he can take it and he can fill it. Amen. And he can make it used for his glory. Hallelujah. The governor had no clue. The servants knew they were probably a little bit edgy about it. But nobody, it doesn't even say no, anybody at the table knew where that vessel came from. Amen. You know your past. God knows your past. God knows what's going on with you right now. Amen. But you're still here. He allowed you to still be here. And he wants to form you. And he wants to fashion you. And he wants to fill you. Amen. For his purpose and for his glory. Hallelujah. He's not finished with you yet. Amen. Hallelujah. Another example was Mary's worship. Amen. The anointing of Jesus for his burial. Amen. Now this vessel was a beautiful vessel. This alabaster box. Mark 14 and 3. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard. Very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. I like to read from the different uh, books there because it gives you a better picture. Luke 7, 37, and behold, a woman in the city, and this gives us more detail about Mary, says, which was a sinner. When she knew that Jesus sat at meat in, in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment and stood at his feet behind him weeping and began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. Amen. 
This vessel, this alabaster box was filled with something very costly, very precious. Amen. And it was all Mary had to give. She didn't have a clean life to offer. She didn't have everything together. Amen. But she had one thing that was more precious than everything else to her. And she had one purpose for it. And that was to take this precious box, this precious gift, amen, and break it and be willing to give it all, amen, to Jesus. Amen. She came and she she came behind him and she broke it open and it said that it poured upon his head and it poured upon his, all the way down his garments, down to his feet. Amen. Hallelujah. John 12 and 3 says, Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Amen. Some sacrifices are so powerful. Amen. That when they're broken open before the Lord. Amen. It begins to fill the atmosphere around you. Amen. There's something else. Amen. That God wants to do with you. There's something more that he has for you. There's a greater height. Amen. There's a greater purpose. Amen. And your sacrifice is, is valuable. Amen. To the Lord. Amen. The odor filled the house. Amen. The odor filled the the room and the atmosphere. Praise the Lord. And you might ask, amen, like the dissenters, there was a few dissenters there, right? Some people said, well, that, that was a waste. This could have been sold and given to the poor. Amen. And Jesus put them in their place. You might be like them and say, is it really worth it? Sometimes with our gift and with our sacrifice, we think, we kind of try to rational, rationalize it. Is it really worth me giving that extra? Is it really worth me going to that extra prayer meeting? Is it really worth me doing that extra thing for the house of the Lord? Is it really worth it? Amen. Or is it a waste? And you know the answer. The answer is no, emphatically no. Amen. There's an eternal impact. Eternal impact. You're doing something that's going to outlive you. Something that's going to outlast you. Amen. There's an eternal impact when you pour everything out before the Lord. Amen. And that's the kind of atmosphere we want to create in the house of the Lord. Amen. That's the kind of thing that we want God to do here in this place. Amen. To fill this place with his presence. Amen. King Solomon's sacrifice was enormous. 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. And if you think about it, if each family brought one or two animals, amen, which was the norm, More than 250,000 animals were probably sacrificed at the temple, amen, that day. When Solomon's temple, amen, was dedicated and open and anointed before the Lord, amen, that sacrifice was enormous. I mean, just, if you put 250,000 sheep out into the parking lot right now, you wouldn't be able to get, you wouldn't be able to get out of here. Amen. But was it worth it? Was it worth it? Was the sacrifice? Amen. You have to think about it. Some of those families, that might have been their dinner. That might have been, say, well, should we bring one or two? Oh, let's bring two. We've got to give this all we've got. Amen. Not knowing maybe where their milk or where their meal was going to come from. Amen. But look what happened. Look what happened with that sacrifice. Second Chronicles chapter 7 verse 1 says, Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, 
the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice. And the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priests could not enter into the house of the Lord because of the glory of the Lord, because of the glory of I'm sorry, because of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good and his mercy endureth forever. It was worth the sacrifice. It was worth it. Amen. There's a there's a place where you get in sacrifice. Amen. That it, you stop ministering. Amen. Like those priests. They they were doing their duties. They were they were trying to minister in the house of the Lord. But when God got ready to move, when God got ready to let the fire fall and the glory fill the house. Amen. They were their ministry was set aside. They had to leave the, the house of the Lord in the presence of the Lord because they could no longer minister because God began to minister. Amen. And if God had not shown all the people the fire falling and the glory filling the house, amen, it, might, it may as well been, amen, the people may have not seen what was happening in the house of the Lord. Remember, the people were not allowed to see what was going on. They weren't allowed into the sanctuary, into the tabernacle, into the temple. Amen. But God wanted to show them that their sacrifice was well worth it. Amen. When you sacrifice and when you open up yourself and when you give everything unto the Lord and you say, God, be formed in me, be formed in me. Amen. And let God fill you. Amen. It is worth every single sacrifice you make, every single prayer you pray, every single time you worship and praise the Lord. Amen. There's one more sacrifice that I want to talk about. Amen. And I'm closing. Amen. Can you stand with me? Amen. Praise the Lord. One more sacrifice. Amen. That is seated even the sacrifice there at Solomon's temple. Amen. And that was when God became flesh and dwelt among us. Emmanuel. God with us. Amen. The image of the invisible God. Amen. Became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. And he died on the cross. And his body, the vessel, was broken. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10 says, For a body hast thou prepared me, a vessel, amen, for, your, for the glory of God to be revealed. Amen. I didn't give you this scripture, Philippians 2.8. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Amen. And when his body was broken, amen, and when, his, when he hung his head and died, and said, it is finished. Amen. That veil in the temple, in the tabernacle was rent. Amen. And it opened up the way for every single one of us to be filled with his spirit. Amen. That sacrifice was so well worth it. Amen. That he intended it even before the creation. Amen. He was the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Amen. And I'm so thankful for that sacrifice, that great sacrifice. Amen. I'm so thankful that he hung on that cross. Amen. And bled and died for me. I'm so, I mean, I, words cannot express. Amen. How powerful it is. But you know what? A dead God is not good for anyone. 
Amen. So he died and he was buried. Amen. And that stone, that great stone rolled in front of that tomb and locked, locked him in. Amen. And they thought it was done. They thought it was finished. They thought it was over. They said, we've quelled this rebellion. Amen. This thing is over and done with. Amen. But three days later, amen, the stone was rolled away from the grave. Amen. <laughs> and, and when he was there with them, speaking to them, he told them, amen, go and tarry in Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Amen. You're going to be filled because this sacrifice was not in vain. Amen. He told them, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Amen. I'm going to go away. Amen. But I'm coming back. Amen. And I'm coming back in power. And I'm coming back in glory. Amen. And on the day of Pentecost, amen, when they were when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord with one place. Amen. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Amen. He formed them. Amen. To fill them. Hallelujah. He formed them. Amen. Can we lift up our hands in this place right now? Hallelujah. I don't know what you've been going through, but God knows. Amen. I know you've been seeking the Holy Ghost. Amen. God wants to give it to you today. God wants to fill you today. Hallelujah. There's no reason why you can't receive it today. It's a free gift. Hallelujah. 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 God, fill this place with your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. If you need the Holy Ghost, come right now. Amen. If you're an altar worker, come. Bring somebody to the altar. God wants to fill this place with his presence. Hallelujah.